Well, lots happening uh, in Washington, D.C., in our nation's capital. Many things going on here in Missouri as well. Always a pleasure to be joined by our Missouri Senator Josh Hawley. I'm Brian Houseworth. Senator, we appreciate your time. I want to start with an issue that you and Claire McCaskill both worked on. She was in the Senate before you, but you worked on it. You've worked on it as well. And it's about the Table Rock Lake Coast Guard issue with duck boats. You have written, and I've read this letter, to the Coast Guard, a scathing letter. What are you calling on them to do, sir? I'm calling on them to finally implement the safety recommendations of the National Transportation and Security Board, the NTSB, who has been recommending for years now that the Coast Guard take action to prevent the kind of tragedy that we saw on Table Rock Lake almost two years ago. 17 people lost their lives. I've also introduced legislation that would write this into law. In fact, would go even beyond what the NTSB has recommended. New safety procedures for these boats, new rules about when they can go on the water if there has been a severe weather warning as there was on that night in July two years ago. This is the kind of action that we need, I think, to keep folks safe, not just in our state, but in every state where these rides are available. Senator Hawley, you mentioned in your letter what happened in Hot Springs, Arkansas in 1999. A lot of similarities between that and what happened at Table Rock Lake. But you write this in this sentence to the Admiral. You say, quote, this tragic event, talking about Table Rock Lake, this tragic event should never have occurred. A direct quote. Elaborate on that, please. If the Coast Guard had implemented the NTSB's recommendations from the late 1990s, almost 20 years ago now, 20 years from the time of the accident, then this would not have happened because what the Coast Guard has been recommending for years is what they call reserve buoyancy. That just means you've got to have extra life preservers, extra ways to keep a boat afloat if it starts to take on water, additional ways to pump water out of a boat once it begins to take it on, also ways to get to remove the canopy uh, so that folks can exit the vehicle in the case of an emergency. But the, the Coast Guard has not implemented any of these NTSB recommendations for decades, literally decades now. This just has to stop. I mean, people have lost their lives in our state, in other states, all across the country. There's no reason for this. It's time for the Coast Guard to act. And why aren't they acting? You know, I don't know the answer to that, Brian. This has been a constant source of frustration to me. It was a source of frustration when I was Attorney General. Uh, it's been a source of frustration in my time in the Senate. And this is why I say we also need to move forward with legislation. Over a year ago, I introduced legislation that would write these requirements and these protections into law. It is time for the Senate to act on that legislation, and I hope that they will. Senator, not a lot of time left, and I know you're very busy. Totally unrelated, but about a year ago, I think it was a year ago tomorrow, you and I were walking down East Capitol Avenue here in Jefferson City after the Jefferson City tornado. Um, just your memory of that day, what you observed, and all the people, the thousand, thousand thousand plus volunteers what you remember about that day in about jefferson city the damage it sustained that day i remember my very first feeling was just incredible gratitude and thankfulness that more lives were not lost and more people not injured because the devastation the severity uh, of the storm of the tornado was very very significant and the devastation we saw to buildings and structures uh, and to people's lives, very, very significant. And so I, I continue to be incredibly grateful that there was not further cost in terms of human life. But I also remember the number of people lining the street who were out helping their neighbors, out delivering food. I think there was a local restaurant owner who had set up a tent and was uh, cooking meals for people right there on the spot and just giving it away, just donating what he had, including his time and his skill. And I just thought, you know, that is the very best of Missouri. It's also the best of America. In the midst of a crisis, th these were not professional volunteers, although we're grateful for them. These are just neighbors out helping their next door neighbors, out helping the people of their town to rebuild their community. And I thought it showed the very best of who we are.